Good morning, Agent Phillips. I don't think it's morning. I'm in like a big black nothing. Then you can't prove it's not morning, can you? I guess you're right. I always am. Good to hear from you, though. You know, I can't believe I'm admitting it, but I miss the EMF. Then pay attention. In 1947, the Army Signal Corps, in conjunction with the Haloid Company and the Battelle Memorial Institute, built a secret facility on top of a fallen meteorite near the South Pole. Good old military-industrial complex doing its thing. The project was an attempt to use the fledgling science of imminent signal theory to develop machine-powered telepathy. It's a load of nonsense if you ask me. Oh, machine-powered telepathy. (laughs) At first, subjects were connected using wires and electrodes. So, like, they would hook two soldiers' brains together and try to upload thoughts from one to the other. Like a backup hard drive. Correct. But, due to an unexpected effect of the resonant meteorite crystals... The scientists eventually achieved success in wireless mind-to-mind transfer as well. And that's when they changed the name to Project Black Ink. Not exactly. They changed it to Black Ink when something started talking back through the wireless telepathy. Something inhuman. Something that is right now buried deep under the ice. Something that is trying to get out. And something the Admiral thinks he's talking to in his head. Okay. What do you want me to do about it? Your mission, Agent Phillips, should you choose to accept it, is to wake up! Ah! Yeah! Good morning, Agent Phillips! Welcome to the Haloid and Battelle Institute of Higher Learning! At the South Pole! My shoulder! You shot me with a harpoon gun, you maniac! Or not to worry, Jet Old Bean. The Army Signal Corps left plenty of iodine and bandages. We tied the gauze nice and tight. <laughs> also tied me nice and tight into this. Wait a minute. This is a pod, just like the one you brainwashed me in back on your cruise ship. Yes! The inspiration to build them was planted in me years ago by the great mind from the ice beneath us. This is one of those telepathy machines they built in the 40s for transferring information between brains. And and what's on my forehead? What? Are these electrodes? They're just like mine. Look, I've got them on my forehead too. Twinsies! Then you don't have the wireless machine yet. Oh, not yet, but soon. Just a little more digging. So, you're going to try to transfer something from my head to yours? Oh, no, no, no. Quite the opposite, Chet. You know, for years I asked you to stop calling me Mr. Doe, but you suddenly stopped and it's setting my nerves on edge. Why? <laughs> oh, don't you worry, Chet. I shall return to calling you Mr. Doe very soon. <laughs> Won't I, Mr. Doe? It's time, Admiral. Admiral, listen to me. This Mr. Doe you're talking to in your head is a hallucination. Don't listen to his lies, Admiral. I think he's some manifestation of your alien overlord, but it's... <laughs> Mr. Doe is the emissary of Xerox, Chet. I was chosen to house him in my mind for some time now, but now I must let him go so he can live. In yours! No! <laughs> I've got a body! <laughs> Then, if you secure us a military flight to New Zealand, we'll hop from there to McMurdo Station in Antarctica. We'll leave for Wellington by submarine. While I recognize we don't have a great track record with submarines, I think... Let's talk about track records. I appreciate it, Section Chief, but no need for a pep talk this time. I am certain of our success. Skip. I've called Pat. Oh, of course, Section Chief. Please send her my apologies for needing you to put your date night on hold while our team saves the world. Well, that's not what I was going... I don't know what you did to piss off Tyrone in requisition, Skip, but his attitude is worse than the dudes on our conservative dating. He said, and I quote, If you're doing the goddamn Battle of Hoth, I need more than 12 hours notice. He only had three cold weather parkas on hand. Luckily, I can provide my own for Gloria and myself. These are the actual parkas worn by Mulder and Scully in the X-Files movie. I won them in a celebrity strip poker game. 
And I'm the exact same cut as Jillian Anderson. I want to believe. Here's your section chief. And Agent Granger, Tyrone says you get the extra husky. Uh, thank you, Gloria. But tell Tyrone that we're not... Sorry we're late. We were taking new headshots for Agent Stevens' LinkedIn profile. Oh, God, Skip, your cat allergy. Relax, Paolo. Stevens is using my specially formulated anti-dander medical shampoo. Look, I can stick him right up Skip's nose. Wow, not even a sniffle. And is he... pine-scented? Let's call it a feature, not a bug. Carol, what? you gotta help me. Some dark wizard trapped my mother in this little box. No, Beef, I told you, that's just FaceTime. Get in here. Johnny says he has a new mission for everybody. What do you mean, everybody? Sorry, oh, what? Sorry that was my fault. Did someone order a complete set of Antarctic and ah, Yes, thank you, Dr. Pickle. I need you to start plotting the fastest route by submarine to the Ross Sea. Can you all keep it down? Oh! We're trying to do a recording session next door. Hi, Larry Hastings, bass baritone. Larry! Oh, uh, Bowden. I hope you don't mind. I'm taking a master class from your voice teacher. My what? Listen... This guy is paying me $500 an hour to help him make a demo reel. Let him believe whatever he wants. Ugh. Ch- what? Bonjour. Philippe, my sweet, blissfully ignorant billionaire. No! Monsieur Saint-Revoir, you were of such help to our live-action role-playing group during our historical submarine battle reenactment, we thought you might like to join us for our recreation of the hunt for Red October. And provide a sub, of course. We oui, oui. <laughs> Skip. We are no longer working freelance. There are protocols to follow. You know what I've learned this past year, Section Chief? Screw the protocols. <gasps> oh my god. I did it. I broke him. Only took three years. I repeat, this is a government operation. We cannot put a civilian at risk. Sounds like you need the name of Ted Kennedy's lawyer. Secretary Whitmire. Hello there, uh, Zelda. Word at the uh, Pentagon is that you've got something brewing down here. Thought I'd uh, just come in, check it out. We thought. Afternoon, everyone. When Skip Granger is on a case, MI6 is always interested. What Lord uh, Fancy Pants here means is that we thought we'd uh, see if we could offer any uh, um, assistance. Thank you, Mr. Secretary, Agent Bottoms, but we have everything under control. You can authorize me to undertake Operation Antarctic Overtures. <gasps> Sondheim pun. R.I.P. Okay, listen up, everyone. Admiral H.R.R. Fletcher has found a machine that uses imminent signal theory to- I'm, uh, gonna need to understand this, uh, imminent signal thingy. What machines are we, uh, talking about? The Deceptionum, Model X, Model Ys, Model T Ford, maybe, that wedding broadcast, and that real relaxing sauna he built. Machines that use EM signals to alter and corrupt brain waves at a distance. These things can alter emotions, cause amnesia, or rewrite your entire personality. Just look what a prototype did to Dr. Biff Studebaker. Biff Studebaker? Where? That deadbeat owes me five bucks. Wait, who are we talking about again? So you intend to stop Fletcher before he uses this machine to do what this time? Agent in training McGrath, slide projector. Between this expense report from 1957... The testimony of Oscar-winning actor Balthazar Moncrief Uh... and Dr. Studebaker and Lagrange's non-traditional research on telepathic signals, there is only one possible conclusion. We must act now to get to Antarctica and prevent the Admiral from using this machine to contact an extra-dimensional intelligence and start an alien invasion. Boy, uh... See? Perhaps before Skip begins his briefing in full, we could all move into the roomier auditorium. Good idea, Section Chief. Oh, that's right. Step right, right. Right. right this way. We're right behind you. Hold it. Oh. You four stay. Are you kidding me? Zelda, look. Skip could have put that opening statement better. But no doubt this is happening. Agent in training. Be quiet. Section Chief, I think... Silence! Oh, Agent Granger, there are elements within the intelligence community who believe we were better off dissolved, and you are making their case for them. Section Chief, I understand that we've had some bumps along the road. Bumps! I'm very sure that- (laughs) Bumps! He says, under your leadership, you bankrupted an orphanage, a cat destroyed irreplaceable artworks, you were lured into a compactor by an insane escape room operator in Indiana, and were only saved by a child driving a wrecking ball who also wanted you dead. And that was just this year. Easy, Zelda. We crashed a wedding. 
where I almost died in a volcano. Yes, but we were saving the world. And then I had to go into hiding as a mail clerk, where I thought I'd never see my wife again because being too close to her might get her killed. Never again. Hey, we all made sacrifices. Never again. You did excellent intelligence work, Skip. Now let someone else bring it home. It sounds like you want to call Chet Phillips and hand this off to him. If I knew where he was, I would. Section Chief, you don't mean that. Pat and the CIA will take it from here. Please dismiss the freak show in the auditorium and then wait at home until called for. Oh, no. You're going to sit your ass down, Z. Do not make me the bad guy. You think Pat's going to be proud of you for treating us like dumb, misbehaving puppies? If Pat were here, she'd make the same play. Would I? Pat? Hey, hon. Sorry to interrupt what sounded like a good old-fashioned chewing out. It's really good to see you, Pat. I think we need some good vibes. You know my hugs are free, Gloria. Oh, bring mm. it in. Mmm. Mm. You okay, Zelda? Skip? We're okay, Pat. I just... I believe the section chief was going to say she called you here because she needs the CIA's help on a task which she believes the EMF is not quite up to. That's right. Well, I can get a task force moving ASAP if you give me the details. Hope you like science fiction. Ooh. How fast can you get a task force to the South Pole? 48 hours. Even if you had to convince the up-and-ups that it was for stopping an alien invasion? The Admiral is going to Antarctica. We could be looking at a global... Possibly galactic. ...event at any time. I see. Well, I'll get things rolling right away. Thank you. I'll just need to go home and pack a bag. I suggest you all do the same. What? If an extraordinary circumstance needs to be resolved today, that's the reason the Extraordinary Mission Force exists. But... So the six of us are going to Antarctica. Nice. Pat, no. Zelda, you owe me a date. You, in fact, owe me several dates. So I'm cashing in. Take me to Antarctica. I don't want to be away from you either, Zelda. Plus, I want the Admiral to answer personally for keeping us apart. Granger. Will your plan still be viable if we put the rest of those clowns on their own submarine? Sure. If we're doing Red October, somebody has to be the Dallas. Philippe has replicas of both. It's a deal, Section Chief. Okay. Make me a believer, Agent Granger. April 14th, 7.38 a.m. The team and I are deep within the waters of the Pacific to track down the Admiral and put an end to his A-24-inspired plan. Up there at the helm are our section chief and her lovely wife, Pat. Wave hi to the camera, chief. What in God's forsaken earth are you doing, Bowden? I figured it was high time for an in-depth Tiger King-esque series with world-saving stakes about EMF exploits. And what better time to make my directorial debut? I will politely advise you once to get that camera out of my face. You don't want to find out how I ask you the second time. Now, there's no need to bite his head off. It's a long trip, and it's good he's found a way to stay distracted and productive. Especially if we're going to wander around the Marianas Trench lost because you refuse to ask for directions. I don't need directions. I've been submarining since I was 13. What? My middle school instituted some very creative electives because of the Cold War. Try to calm down, dear. We don't want a repeat of our road trip to the biggest ball of twine in Minnesota. And we don't even have my special secret trail mix to lighten the mood. On the eve of possible catastrophic galactic invasion, the only thing that mattered was getting into the Antarctic. But who could say if the team would be able to put aside their differences, even in the face of annihilation? Here's our fearless leader, Agent Skip Granger. Hard at work on his laptop, no doubt organizing his Instacart receipts by serial number. And there's Agent in Training McGrath, our eyes and ears in the water, her gaze firmly fixed on the periscope. Wave hi to the camera, McGrath. No, with your whole hand. Thoughts on the trip so far, McGrath? Man, old tech is hilarious. This periscope looks like something out of a Marmaduke cartoon strip. I think they're neat. I kind of wish we'd kept them and put them in other modes of transportation. Just imagine a periscope on a plane or a Jeep Wrangler. What would you even use that for? For high-speed bird watching, duh. 
Skip your quiet. What gives? Just going over the plan, making sure everything is airtight. I checked it myself, Skip, and as far as submarine landings on Antarctica go, this is the gold standard. I know, it's just... If I'm being honest, the section chief got to me back in the briefing room. What she said about us... I I know our plans don't always go 100% smoothly. Understatement of the year. But we get the job done! And I'm proud of us. I just never imagined she was so disappointed. Skip, I wouldn't take it personally. This past year was hard. We all went through a lot, and I think the section chief is just scared, even if she has a funny way of showing it. Maybe you're right, but either way, if there was ever a mission we needed to go perfectly, it's this one. All right, team, check your email. I've shared a spreadsheet where I've compiled a database of Area 51 approved strategies for intergalactic alien encounters. I figured we'd just challenge them to a basketball game for the freedom of Earth. We need to stay vigilant. If we do fail, it won't be because we aren't prepared. Um, Agent Granger? So, I'm all for finding the Admiral and stopping him, but I think it's important that we set realistic expectations for what we're walking into. Oh, do you have a prediction for specifically which kind of aliens we might be up against? Uh, no. Because aliens aren't real. Uh... I know it seems wildly fanciful, but Horace Manator believed it and Johnny Onebuck believed him. And if I can't trust an expense report, what can I trust? Bowden? Miss McGrath? Come on! Talk some sense into him. I don't know. I mean, I don't believe it, but I don't not believe it either. You, Mackenzie? But you're the most skeptical person I know! And I wear that badge with honor. But look, a hundred years ago, the things we can do with technology today would have been considered a miracle or magic or something out of Harry Potter. Today, it's just science. I mean, just because we can't back it up yet doesn't mean they're not out there. Bowden? I don't know. And you know what? It doesn't really matter to me. Sometimes the universe is unpredictable, and you have to improvise. Not knowing what's coming is part of the fun. I mean, I don't love the idea of having to compete with alien actors, but as long as I get some great footage, I'm along for the ride. I can't believe this. I know we've had some zany missions, but there has to be a line, right? I understand that, but why this one? We've seen some pretty wild things, and frankly, I'm surprised you're so close-minded, Gloria. I'm not closed-minded. I'm just using my brain. Careful, Gloria. If you got any more condescending, you'd fit right in at Gwyneth Paltrow's book club. (gasps) You take that back! Oof. Look, I'm sorry, but I grew up listening to my Uncle Riley go on and on about lost treasure inside the local sewage treatment plant, or bagel bites being owned by Bigfoot, and... At some point, you need to start demanding hard evidence before you buy into every Reddit theory out there. And the Admiral won't hesitate to take any one of us out while we're busy looking over our shoulders for some tentacled tallywhacker. Gloria, I respect your position on this. You don't have to believe anything. The important thing is that the Admiral believes it, and that makes him very, very dangerous. This is just the sort of dramatic conflict I need for my doc. But at that moment, they were interrupted by a phone call. It's the Red October. Hello? Um, hello, dear. Are you there? I've borrowed the Frenchman's phone. Dr. Pickle, what's going on? We're nearing our rendezvous point. Are you close? Uh, about that. It seems we've ended up in the Labrador Sea. What? But that's up in the Arctic, not the Antarctic. What happened? It seems that Studebaker tore up my map because we thought it was looking at him funny. Then Sandy Bottoms and Philippe started having a row about our passage through the Gulf Stream impacting penguin habitats. Then Dr. Lagrange, who concerned that the Antarctic houses the family members of several of her penguin test subjects, and she fears revenge. Then factions were formed about whether people would rather go see the penguins or the polar bears. And now that Larry fellow is just doing his impression of Danny DeVito as the penguin. And, well, I'm... I'm not really sure how it happened. We need you here. How are we supposed to stop the Admiral if most of our team is 10,000 miles away? Uh, maybe over Zoom. I hear lots of people are working remotely now. We need you to do everything you can to write the course. We need you down here yesterday. Do my best, Agent Granger. But things are getting a little mad and I doubt... Oh! Secretary Whitmire, this is not a good place to dispose of your scotch bottles. For once, Skip was speechless. He stared into the abyss, wondering where this mission had gone so wrong. Bowden, not helping. Sorry, love. No, it's okay. We've been hung out to dry before. We just need to rethink the mission. This is going to be fine if we just put our minds together and have enough time to regroup. Land ho! Plan to surface in five minutes. What the hell? We've got incoming. From where? 15 degrees starboard. And 10 degrees port side. And from the air. Surface. As fast as you can! All hands, abandon ship! Hello and goodbye, dear friends! Oh no! Welcome to Antarctica! Enjoy your watery grave! Oh no! Oh, oh my god! god. Oh, oh my god! Oh. Water coming in! Uh. Oh. Oh. 
by this time, my lungs were aching for air. We're close to shore. Then why is the shore getting smaller? These t- these tides are beasts. Our only chance is. Were you about to say for a huge wave to carry us in? It seemed desirable in the abstract. Well, we are alive. Oh, thank God. Oh, so is my GoPro. Are you all right, love? Uh, well, uh, I think I broke my ankle. We have to find shelter before someone finds you. <gasps> Holy rolled Amundsen! It's Chet Phillips! Chet Phillips? Yes, he might be in here somewhere. Why don't you just call me Mr. Doe? Oh, good. He's brainwashed again. Come on, guys. Get him. Sure thing. As soon as I can stand. Well done surviving multiple ballistic missiles. But now I think it's time for this escapade to... Did you just hit me with snow? Bullseye. What an odd, unpleasant... Wet sensation. Ugh! What are you doing? We're cornered, freezing, and about to die. But even if Zelda was right about us after all... Stop that! I'm still going down, fighting! Ugh! And if all I have are snowballs, then... then snowballs it be! <laughs> Once more into the breach! <laughs> These games are beneath me. <laughs> the melt went right down my underwear. <laughs> Killing you pitiful human meat sacks will be a- That's no snowball! And you're no check. And stay gone, if you know what's good for you. Oh, please tell me I got that. Yes! Good lord, Athena O'Brien! You saved us? And you thought an alien invasion was hard to believe. Come with me. Dry up and get ready for it all to get a billion times weirder. Could someone please carry me? Ugh. Just a little more. A little more. So sorry, McGrath. Skip, next time we come to Antarctica, we bring a team of huskies. Uh, I'm fine. Really. The section chief is helping me practice my uh, dead man's lift. Uh, and Pat is a joy to drag. Oh, you make it a delight. Let me give you a hand. Oh, I definitely didn't get the worst of it. Call my agent. The man, stunt double. Shut up, Montcrief. <laughs> Where are we? Okay, listen up, minions. Minions? Hey. Do you expect us to follow your orders? Athena, I don't know why you saved us, or what you're doing here, or what was wrong with Chet Phillips, but you're going to give us answers. And maybe some cocoa. Ooh, hot cocoa would be lovely. You can begin by telling us what you know about Project Black Ink. Well, for starters, <gasps> you're standing on. Raynard Muldrow! Oh, come on. Is this where they've been the whole time? This is going to be my deep throat. The, uh, non-naughty one. Show yourself, you modulated maniac. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. Sorry, Skip. I have no intention of leaving my protected... Wait. Oh, my God! Is that Jillian Anderson snow parka? Gimme, 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 gimme! Get off me! <gasps> Who oh is this gosh. woman? Cassandra Helsinki! Oh, my God, of course. Of course she's Maldry. Oh my goodness! Who else but the paranoid maniac who thinks the aliens are among us? And was I wrong? If this isn't proof that this whole alien thing is overblown, I don't know what is. You all right, Skip? You look a little green around the gills. Oh, it's nothing. I'm just trying to come to terms with 13 different emotions, including you sent us to defuse rabbit bombs. I had my reasons. Such as? I've been building mathematical models of complex phenomena since I was eight years old. I started to see patterns everywhere. All the missions I sent you on were part of the big picture. And now that you're here, now that we're at the very edge of oblivion, it's time to show you the big board. Uh, this looks like Kaiser Soze wrote a beautiful mind. I like the yarn. Hey, it's perfectly clear if you know what you're looking for. I think you should have looked for a prescription for antipsychotics. Okay, you know what? Just forget the big board. Here's the situation. Xerox, the alien invader, 
is buried deep in the ice under the Project Black Ink base. You've seen this alien burial site? Are you kidding me? I'm not setting foot in that place and getting possessed by alien intelligence. This is nonsense. To be fair, Chet went in there with the Admiral and he came out, well... hmm. He called us human meat sacks and seemed not to know what snow was. Then why are you living in a fortified radio tower right next to this alien graveyard? I built this tower. This entire structure is a huge, superconductive antenna that I designed and built expressly for suppressing telepathic signals. As long as my signal blockers remain operational, Xerox's mind can't reach out to the rest of the world. I call it the Space Jammer. (laughs) The Space Jammer. What? I hope you like getting sued by all the Warner Brothers. Oh, man. Cassandra, what does the Admiral want? To destroy the structure you built? He'd need a megaton detonator to knock this sucker down. No, he's going straight to the source. He's going to free Xerox. All right, since I'm literally standing in Duchovny's snowshoes. Are you? Let's indulge this little X-Files episode. What do you mean, free Xerox? Xerox is frozen deep under the ice. The ice crystals are a great natural telepathy blocker. But with global warming and polar melting, that defense has been weakening for years. If the Admiral actually digs Xerox out entirely, their telepathic signal grows magnitude stronger. Enough to overpower my space jammer. Enough to blanket the entire planet and corrupt every human mind. So we have to stop the Admiral before he digs out Squidzilla. Okay then, follow me, underlings. <laughs> you think we're gonna trust you? Sure. Our interests are aligned, you have no alternatives, and I need retrots. We do need all the help we can get, Section Chief. To do what, exactly? We enter the Black Ink Base, deprogram Chet Phillips, and stop the Admiral before he frees this... whatever we want to call it... Oh, ...and prevent it from taking over the world. Remember, Skip. The jammer blocks all signals. You go in, you won't be able to radio out. Also, uh, sorry to be a bother, but I don't think I'm going anywhere on this ankle. Oh my god, sweetie, sit! (sighs) Sorry I won't be able to stick together for our date, hon. I'm gonna murder that Phillips. Give him a karate chop for me. I'll be right back. Don't you worry, Patricia. I'll take good care of the wifey. Athena, I don't want any unpleasant surprises thanks to you. Oh, come on, Skip. Any surprises due to me are invariably pleasant ones. Uh, Oh! oh. Uh, Ignore me. I am just here using the sauna. Dad, for the love of God, we've got company pants on! Uh, someone give me a little more light up ahead, please. There, is that better? Uh, more, please. I'll add in my light. Still more. We have plenty of visibility to the next turn in the ice tunnel. Oh, it's not for seeing. I need depth of field for Ugh. this next shot. Just Shut up, going. Going. Grief. Uh, Orson Welles didn't have to deal with this, I'll wager. Athena, how far down are we? About 300 meters, given how much rope we've paid out. Sound check? Good. Into the ice. The Xerox story. Take 17. It was here, six Olympic swimming pools under the frozen polar cap, that the great weight of our task began to weigh on us. Really? The missile attack didn't do it for you? Personally, I feel all our missions carry a great deal of weight. Why would you... <clears throat> I don't know where we're going, but I do know where we've been. No, that's not right. I don't know where we're going. <laughs> we're going down! What? Uh, uh, it's sloping! It's too slippery! Yeah. It's climbing here so... Yeah. Ugh, snowball fights, ice slides, it's like the idiot Winter Olympics with you people. Oh my gosh, look at this room! Oh, oh gracious. <gasps> it's the inner sanctum of Project Black Ink! Whoa! Loyal viewers, we've gracefully entered what appears to be a secure laboratory on the lowest sub-level. The room is ringed with old punch card computers, and at the center, a hydraulic platform next to... No way! It's the hypnopods from the cruise ship. Like the one you put Chet into? And me. Did that maniac admiral drag these down here? No. 
they were the original model. All the plans, the schematics, all the tech he built, it must have been all telepathically transmitted to the Admiral from this base. By who? The people who constructed this base are long dead. Uh, yeah, sounds like aliens. Look, on the side of the machine, the Haloid Corporation and the Battelle Memorial Institute. Those must have been the companies who partnered with the military to develop this technology. Battelle's in Ohio. What's Haloid? Sounds like a breath mint. No, but it sounds familiar. Are you okay, Skip? I remember when the Admiral strapped me into one of these machines. How he attached the electrodes to my temples. How the wires and suckers felt like... Like what? Like tentacles. An apt analogy, <gasps> Skip Granger. <gasps> Zelda! <laughs> Hands off me, you store brand chet mix. Teddy's not home, Trixie. Uh, 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 not one step closer, Mr. Granger, if you value your section chief's life. Hi, Kiba! Oh. Ha! Go! Oh. Ha! Ha! Got your space rock, you deluded alien worshiper! Great work, Gloria! You want your connection to your overlord back, right, Admiral? If you kill Zelda, you have no more leverage. You know something, Miss McGrath? You're absolutely right. No, uh, Zelda, Zelda, not the pod! Forget about me, Granger! Ha ha ha! Mr. Doe, would you very sweetly restrain Athena as well? I'm going to murder you, Admiral. You seem so angry, Athena. You'll feel much better when we put Trixie in that little head of yours. Oh, you son of a... <clears throat> <clears throat> Let me out of here. Uh, Zelda! What are you doing to Zelda? Uh, nothing that can't be undone. Her mind is now connected to the mainframe. You remember how dangerous it was to remove Granger from his pod, don't you, Miss McGrath? I remember. Disconnect her! Oh, you can do it yourself! From the control machine waiting below. <gasps> you mean the wireless machine? The one you need to contact and freeze your rocks? Many hands make light work. You four will descend into the excavation pit to help me unearth the great machine. Mr. Doe will remain topside with the section chief and Athena. And should you fail me, we can reduce the Section Chief's IQ to clam level. Can't we, Mr. Doe? Absolutely. No! Skip, we can't help him free that thing. There's no thing to free. We have to buy time. Skip, we can't go back to Pat without Zelda. Do we have a deal, Agent Granger? Deal. Then let us board the sacred platform. You mean this modified cherry picker? Step lively now. Push the green button, would you, Mr. Granger? Let us descend into the depths. Knit one, pearl two. Knit one, pearl two. Lady, you were right. This is satisfying. I know, right? Good thing you had all this yarn for your crazy conspiracy board. More cocoa? Please. Mm. Whoa. What's that? The base's signal matrix is changing. I gotta alter the jammer's field to compensate. Hmm. I can't help but notice your OS hasn't been updated since the 1982 ET Atari game. Updating is exactly how they infiltrate your system. Who's they? They! What changed in the signal? It's a huge spike. It's okay. Oh, God. Deep breaths. Look at the data. What's causing it? Well, it's localized. Sublevel seven. Wait. I think they trapped someone in one of the telepathy machines. Who? How would I okay, know? Okay, okay. Look for a pattern. Okay. Deep breaths. We've got high, jagged frequencies. They're resisting, whoever it is. Huge mental fortitude. Real stubborn streak. Probably someone who doesn't ask for directions. Right. It's Zelda. Where do you think you're going, lady? You've got a broken ankle. (sighs) Frack my ankle. I'm going to save my wife. But I could use help. Forget it. I didn't survive this long on only one apocalypse bunker. I'm setting the jammer to maximum and firing up my copter. Cassandra, someday you're gonna have to stop running away. You spent a year fighting aliens behind a vocal disguise, and it's time to ask yourself, what would Fox Mulder do? But, I... Hey, Muldrake, your coffee machine is broken. 
God damn it. Yes, down into the icy earth we go. Twenty feet, forty feet. Can we do without the countdown? The man likes to hear himself talk, huh? And that's me saying that. It's overcompensation for being such an insignificant human being. Ah, what a team you have, Skip Granger. Seething with resentment. Or is it insecurity? Here at the turning point of history, your bubbling band seems just so, uh, small. Maybe you're right, Admiral. Maybe I am a small person with small friends. But I wouldn't want to be here with anyone else. And you're completely alone. To be the pinnacle of human existence is to be alone, Skip Granger. <gasps> Whoa! The, the walls. They're glowing with chunks of the meteorites. Holy cow. This hole is the impact crater? Are those crystals singing? They shall sing ever louder when we power up the telepathy machine. You can keep my crystal, Agent Kovac, as a souvenir! <laughs> 200 feet down! All out! Where are we? All I see is a steel door frozen in the ice. Correct, sir! Time to open it up! Chop, chop! Hand around the ice picks, that's right! To work! You're that excited, but you're just gonna hang around and watch? I'm management! Now pick! Pick! <laughs> <laughs> Is Xerox behind this door? <laughs> no, no, Mr. Granger. Cassandra Helsinki said Xerox was frozen down here. From what I understand, Cassandra Helsinki also believes Arrival was documentary. No, the wireless telepathy machine stands behind that frozen door. With it, we can speak directly through the skin of reality to free the Great One from beyond space and time. Is it me, or are those crystals getting louder and brighter? They're like quartz in a radio tuning the signal. If we dig this telepathy machine out of the ice, the crystals will make it powerful enough to reach every mind on Earth. Aliens or not, we can't let the Admiral have that kind of power. And it's up to us to make sure it doesn't happen. Oh, watch out! Whoa. How very efficient! You've opened the vault already! Behold! Ah! Gloria, what's wrong? It's a man! What? It's another pod, and there's oh, oh, an oh, old God. man in there! Yes, just as I suspected! Oh my God, he's hooked into... Jesus, Skip! Ladies and gentlemen, the Model Z. Strengthened by the crystals, it is the most powerful wireless telepathy machine ever constructed by human hands. It is a transmitter. It is a radio for talking to God. I... I don't believe in your God. It doesn't matter, Miss Kovac. Once we reach out to the nether dimensions, you will behold the Great One with your own senses. But Grant, what's this man doing here? Can we get him out? He looks like Keanu Reeves in The Matrix. He's being fed intravenously. I think the Model Z is keeping him alive. Then he's been down here for 75 years. <gasps> ah! His eyes open! Okay, I am officially freaking out. Get him out of there. No, he'll never survive the exposure. Hey. Uh, not really my problem. Open sesame. <gasps> oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Sir, are you okay? I'm uh, awake. I'm alive. Say, doll, what day is it? Friday? Hot dog. It's a Friday in the year 2022. 2022? Good night. Sir, were you the subject of the Project Black Ink experiment? You bet your bottom dollar, Ace. Corporal Tad Valerian, Army Signal Corps, at your service. Well, that's an insane coincidence. Sir, what was the last thing you remember? Holy Toledo, the Model Z. It snapped its cap. Started taking over the minds of everyone in the base, you catch my drift. Telling them to do things. Weird things. They had to bury it in the ice. And me with it. Uh, Skip, the Model Z is printing something. It's faint. Hard to read, but I think it's printing everything the Corporal is saying. Everything I'm thinking. It knows. It's in my head. It's got its wires on me. Get me out of this thing. Regret! Quick! Hang in there, buddy. We'll get you out. You're gonna be fine. Watch out! He's got an ice pick! Oh! Ah! 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 Ah
murderer. Oh, please. I saved that man from having to catch up on 18 different superhero franchises. You... You gotta stop it. You gotta stop. You monster. Step away now. We're stepping. All We're right. stepping. Easy does it. The Model C. It shut down. The corporal's body was powering the machine. Why did you kill him? He was far too old and used up. Not enough power for our needs. I will supply it with a fresh subject. To be a new battery? Step away from the Model Z, Skip Granger. I won't ask again. The machine. It printed the corporal's final thoughts. <gasps> Fascinating. The final thoughts of a man connected to the machine, to the great beyond. Skip, what is it? What does it say? It says, beware of... <laughs> Skip? Skip, are you okay? He understands. Skip, Skip, Skip please Skip, talk what's to wrong? Us. He won't stop laughing. It is clarity. He has seen a message of pure truth. And what is the message, Skip Granger? It says, beware of Xerox! Yes! <laughs> Xerox! The ever-living... No! Xerox! The photocopier! <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what do you mean? It's etched here on the teletype, too. Look! The Xerox Model Z telepathy machine and file system! <laughs> Are you kidding me? That's not possible. <laughs> oh my god! You're right! Right here! X-E-R-O-X Model Z! It's a mistake! Uh, on a joke! Wait! Haloid and Battelle! Now I remember! The Haloid Corporation and the Battelle Memorial Institute funded the first photocopying machines! In fact, their first photocopier was called the Model A! Lies! So wait, they built photocopiers and then got into telepathy machines? <laughs> the inventor of xerography was actually a known proponent of psychic research. I should have put this together long ago! It doesn't matter! These companies reached out and touched a superior mind! <laughs> Don't you get it? There is no alien named Xerox! There never was! Impertinence! I received holy psychic messages! <laughs> yeah, from Corporal Valerian! He was plugged into the Model Z and barely conscious! Oh, wait! He had those cables and suckers all over him, just like tentacles! And he sent you these mental images, and you saw tentacles! And when you picked up that meteorite, the Model Z signal got so strong, it broke your stupid brain and created that Mr. Doe guy like some split personality. The same way it freaked out back in the 40s and broke everyone in the space's brains trying to enslave them. Because look, all its service lights are on. This machine has been crying out for help since the 1940s, cannibalizing whatever human brains it could corrupt to service it because it needed... <laughs> because its printer ran out of black ink! <laughs> <laughs> Stop laughing! Stop laughing, I command you! Mr. Fletcher, you have built an entire religion, murdered countless people, and spent your entire life trying to change a toner cartridge! <laughs> no. uh, could have been worse, Admiral. We met a woman a few months back who worshipped a cigarette lighter. Oh, all right, Gloria, you win the bet. No aliens. Here's your five bucks. Oh, you take it, Admiral. Put it towards a CMYK cartridge. Oh, Enough! <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Watch out, everyone! Oh. He's got the Model Z cables! Xerox must live. The message must be heard. Oh, shit! No! He plugged himself into it. It's powering up again. Shut it down! Shut it down! I... He's trying to get into our brains. Gloria, start the lift! I can't move! <laughs> done it. He's done it. No one can stop us now. Hello, Agent Phillips. Have you come for your woman? You are injured, yet you think you can fight me? Did you try that ice slide coming in here? So fun. You will soon feel Xerox's cold embrace. I can feel the power. I can feel Xerox coming. Did you feel what? this coming? <laughs> Let me out. I command you! Thanks for the distraction, Patricia. Not a prob. I'll get Zelda. Release me! Next time, 
maybe don't lock somebody up in a device she spent two years operating. I know how to wipe minds and I know how to bring them back. Trixie! Don't make me kill you. Oh, Trixie's not home right now. Sorry, Mr. Frickin' Doe. <laughs> what? Hey, you! Ha- oh my god! You have to get out of here. Yes, we do. Come on, I'm getting no, you out of No, you don't understand. I'm plugged into the signal. I can feel it. I can actually control it with my mind. Watch. Oh my gosh. The Admiral is in the signal too somehow. And he's getting stronger. The team is down there with him right now. Athena, start the lift controls. Mm, why should I help those losers? Pretty please. Oh, okay, okay, sure. Geez, she's like magic. Pat, I'll buy you all the time I can. Take the team and go. <sighs> you are a stubborn, infuriating woman. And I even saw a computer readout that proved it. Yep. Pat, what are you okay, doing? Move over. <laughs> this pod's a squeeze. Don't put that electrode on your... Two minds are better than one. We're going to die down here. Then at least we're together. I won't live apart from you ever again. That's so funny. (laughs) I I can hear your thoughts. It's like you're in my head. It's, uh... Oh, my gosh. It's sort of tingly. It sort of is. (laughs) It's amazing. (laughs) It's love. (laughs) These damn restraints. I wish I could hold your hand. I know. But it's kind of like we're holding brains. (laughs) Um... Gross. Would you two women be quiet? Never. Let's make some noise. Mother didn't love me! Stop! She didn't love me too much! much. Uh, The man's got me down! uh, Mighty Xerox, answer me! I've crossed oceans, literal and figurative, spilled blood in service of your all-knowing voice, and now I've got to listen to this. Where are you? Talk to me! Admiral. Oh, why, Xerox? Is it really you? Tis I, Xerox the Almighty, Xerox High, Sleeper of Time, Grand Dreamer, awoken by your devotion. Great One, your voice? What of it? It's, it's mine. Don't you like this voice? Like it? I love it! I am the Great One's vessel, his conduit! I will manifest you, Mighty One! I am the most important being in the universe! Get your ass up, Ranger. Athena? Thank you! What a perfect time to turn to good! Let's not get carried away. What the hell was that? The Admiral plugged himself into the wireless telepathy machine! We're clear! Cut the lift cables! Well, viewers, the Admiral was forever trapped in an icy pit of his own neck. Oh, God, no! Oh, my chicken and stars! Is he levitating? And golden? He's glowing like a living Oscar statue! It's witchcraft! It's aliens! It's fake, you morons! What? He's got a telepathy machine. He's still down in that pit. He's just making you see and hear whatever he wants you to. He can't do anything but screw with your petty little minds. Uh, Is that right, Trixie? Uh, What? Get out! I I won't... Uh, Huh? Oh! How wonderful! Uh, What? My mind feels like a million guppies swimming in a glass bowl. Well, that's not great. He overrode her whole personality! Skip, we can't hold back his psychic signals any longer. Hurrah! Zelda! Oh, well now. I feel exquisite. No! Uh, my hugs are more powerful than a billion octopi. Stand down, Agent Granger. That's an order from your section reef. Stay back, <laughs> section chief. Skip, the Admiral is using the Model Z and turn them into... 
him! Section Chief, please don't make us hit you. That's like 500 different HR violations. Uh, McGrath, you must have some tech solution for this. Sorry, I left my WMD at home. <laughs> Whoa! What? I don't have WMD, but how about WWMD? What would Mulder do? Ah! Oh, 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 oh. Cassandra, what is that thing? A portable backpack version of the jammer I whipped up. At close range, it'll keep him contained. Or maybe not. Wait, Helsinki, turn around. What are you doing? Hot wiring your psychic weapon. What? Why? I just have to reverse the signal burst and it should double in on itself and boom! We'll have ourselves a crude but very effective EMP. And short out the Model Z forever! Hurry up, McGrath! And Done. Charge it, Cassandra. Cassandra? Far out, meaties. Oh, God! It's the end of the world as we know it, and I feel bright. Get the EMP offer back! Uh, got it! Bowden. Oh, McGrath, catch! Uh, got it! Gloria, uh, my barnacle beauty! Let me unleash the tidal wave of my love upon you! No, none of this is real. I can fight it. I can... No, I can... Seize the day! No! All hands to port! Mackenzie McGrath! McGrath, turn it on! It just needs to charge. Hold them off. How do we fight all of our friends? This is what all those hours of online gaming in our apartment prepared us for. Free yourself from your landlocked troubles, Skip Granger. Join me on the Grand Aquatic Stage! Mackenzie McGrath! Stop your technological tinkering and testify to the triumph of tsunamis! Jeez, Gloria, of all the qualities he could give you, he went with alliteration? Gloria! I'd keep it out of that game! Chatty! I'll free you, my beautiful Sturgeon General! Oh, my poor little pufferfish. Did I hurt you when I supercharged your brain before? Hurt me? Never, Trixie. I feel reborn, like a baby whale. Oh. It's no use, McGrath! We're outnumbered! Just a few more seconds! Uh, McGrath, no! Skip, take the EMP before I throw myself upon you no. like the waves of the mighty Mediterranean. No. Give me the... Ah, I got the EMP! Uh, hmm, uh, how do I use the EMP, McGrath? Ahoy! Oh no! Join us, Skip Granger! We shall be strong like the mighty tide! Cozy as a cadre of catfish. The world is our oyster! Believe in the magnificent power of Zero! Become one with the ocean! Give in, Granger! There is no one left to save you now! Blah. Sorry we're late, dear boy. Took a wrong turn. Or 20. Fall in, men, and their uh, assorted genders. Uh, spectrum, can I say that? My god, is that man flying? You want to fly? Beef, give him a shot of the good stuff. Sorry, Carol, that golden god has me terrified and weirdly aroused. Sorry, sorry, but uh, if you want the world, Admiral, you'll have to go through the EMF. All right. No! Oh, that dear man tingles. Oh, I am the very model of a modern major general. Let's dance! Wait, why am I still me? <laughs> because I want you to see every second of your ignominious defeat. I'll take that, mortal. No! The EMP! Ooh, shiny! Smash it, smash it, smash it! Kneel, unbeliever. <laughs> yes! Kneel before me, Skip Granger! You are the last of your kind! You're wrong! There will always be those who stand up to people like you! <laughs> Soon, everyone will be like me! Yes! Always! Oh, watch your hope die, Skip Granger! Crush that unholy device, Mr. Doe! <laughs> I told you, Admiral. What?! My name is Chet Phillips. EMF. Granger, oh. Agent Phillips. You okay, little buddy? You. You? Chet Phillips, you have saved the world again. 
Oh, uh, McGrath, Bowden, Gloria, are you all right? Oh, my head hasn't hurt like this since Bowden's one man, my fair lady. Oh, oh. My Has my brain been permanently altered if I never want to see a gold statue again? <laughs> I think we can learn to live with it. Oh. Mm. Pat, are you okay? <laughs> oh. I am so sorry you had to go through this. <laughs> Are you kidding? Zelda, that was the most fun I've had since our honeymoon. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Whoa. I stopped an alien invasion. Next up, exposing Bigfoot as the secret owner of Bagel Bites. Athena, where are you? Oh. Athena, oh, Athena, wake up. Come I back to me. I don't want to go to school today, Dad. Just oh. tell him I'm on a spaceship. Well, well, well. The uh, infamous over uh, Brian's. Uh. Phillips, you've uh, delivered in Spain. Well. I... And place these two under arrest hmm. and get some medical attention for the rest of our uh, so-called agents. So? Called? It'll be all right, Gloria. We just saved the world. Oh, I bet they give us a medal for this. And so, this uh, Congressional Medal of Honor for showing great resourcefulness in the uh, face of deadly adversity and for saving all of humanity, blah, 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 Agent Skip Granger. Yes, sir. Agent Gloria Kovac. Present. Special asset, uh, Bowden Moncrief. I am rather special, yes. And agent in training, Mackenzie McGrath. You know it. Would like to jointly present this medal to Earth's greatest hero, Chet Ura Phillips. Phillips. <sighs> you got, wow. I, wow. You know, your sixth medal of honor means just as much as your first one. I just want to say, Chief, I am so happy to be back home at the good old EMF. Yep. Let's keep the world safe, team. Speaking of which, I uh, hate to cut things short here, folks, but there is a situation brewing in East Asia that requires delicacy, tactics, and, uh, and grenades. My three best subjects. Come along, Chet. We will uh, get you up to speed. Ta-ta, uh, Zelda. Keep up the great work, everybody. The Chetster is back. Yes, of course, uh, let me talk Seriously. Thanks. I'm... I'm sorry, folks. Skip... I want you to know I'm happy to eat my words. You all saved the world. I have never been prouder of any team in my command. I'd like to just savor that for a moment. That did feel good, right? I think a celebratory pizza is in order. Yeah, they really didn't have top-notch pizza at Concordia Station, did they? Go wild! Put it on the company credit card! In that case, I'd like to request several dozen toppings. You're all taking this rather well, Section Chief. The man I love, my best friends, and I just saved the world together. And you're paying me $36,000 a year plus benefits to do it. You told me the pay was competitive. I didn't say against what. Zelda, as the person here most invested in awards, let me speak for all of us when I say, Chet Phillips can have it. It's good this way. It's better this way. There's nowhere else any of us would rather be. Well, if that's how you really feel... Then I have one more thing to tell you that you might not want to hear. Bring it. I received intel that a children's theater in Poughkeepsie, New York, has been suspected of harboring a famed assassin who goes by the name of the Child Star. <gasps> Do we get to go to Poughkeepsie? You know, I once starred in a gritty reboot of The Odd Couple in Poughkeepsie. Zelda, will you turn on the slide projector before I strangle this bozo with a USB cable? Skip. Should I bring in the dossier and we can all discuss this over pizza? Mission accepted. Mission Rejected was created by Pete Barry, J. Michael DeAngelis, and John Dowgan. This episode was written by Pete Barry, J. Michael DeAngelis, John Dowgan, and Paige Klinecki, and directed by Pete Barry. It starred Chris Klinecki as Skip Granger, Nalza Sarkai as Mackenzie McGrath, Dave Stanger as Bowden McGreef, Paige Klinecki as Gloria Kovac, Faith Dowgan as Section Chief Zelda Anders, Ashley Banks as Athena O'Brien, Jill Ivey as Cassandra Helsinki, with Kirk White as Chet Phillips and Mr. Doe, Kevin McGrath as the Mission Boys, and Bob Killian as the Admiral. Guest starring Karen Yang as Dr. Carol Lagrange, John Dowgan as Dr. Biff Studebaker, Shannon Perry as Dr. Hermione Pickle, J. Michael DeAngelis as Larry Hastings, Tage Doss as Philippe saint Renoir, Eric Perry as Whitmire, Dave Surface as Sandy Bottoms, Pete Barry as Christatus O'Brien, Natty Leach as Valerian, 
Eric Werner as Balthazar Moncrief, Rebecca Surfus as Lucky, and Sarah Ray Werner as Pat. Music, sound editing, and mixing by Pete Barry. Thank you for supporting us this season. We'll be taking a hiatus, but we'll be back with behind the scenes and bonus content throughout the break. Who knows? Perhaps I'll even do a revealing special about my life as the mission voice. You know, the man behind the voice, the story behind the man. Real Oscar bait. If you believe that, I have some Bitcoin to sell you. This has been a Portrait Production, copyright 2022, Extraordinary Missions Limited. Mission Rejected will return later this year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Curse you, draw for wild! And I win. <sighs> Les Marker, now that we know the world isn't coming to an end, mm-hmm. we're going to need something to relieve the monotony of our ill-defined prison sentences. Oh. <gasps> uh, lucky. Oh, God. Oh. Ah, wonderful. Reunited in Supermax prison with the even more obnoxious Bon Creef. Oh. Back away from the bars, Lucky. You're in big trouble now, Chet Phillips. Now that the mastermind is here. All right, all right. All you quiet down. In you go, old man. (sighs) You too, darling. And for what it's worth, thanks for putting my head right again. Well, I guess you owe me one. I'd say we're pretty even at this point. You know this place will never hold me. That's my girl. (sighs) Ugh. Well, at least we finally have enough players for a real game. Who's for Settlers of Qatar? Have fun. See you around, Mr. Doe. (laughs) Oh, no. Mr. Doe is gone for good. Well, well. You have quite the poker face, Mr. Doe. You're not real. You're just some remnant of his personality. Mr. Doe is erased, the Admiral is dead, so shut up and get out of my head! But it's so comfortable in here. Don't worry, Mr. Doe. This will be our little secret. (laughs) (laughs) 